Okay. Okay, everyone. Welcome back to Digital Artcast. Um, not sure what episode this is, but came at this point. But uh, we're back. I've been not being here for a week, on end because Colin's been super busy. Haven't you, Colin? That's like that's like that's that's becoming a regular staple of the intro. Yeah. We haven't done shit in a while because I, I <laughs> can't so stop cool. working myself to death. <laughs> yeah, Cole's gonna die soon. No, kids, kids, not for real. Anyway, yeah. Actually, I did just get allergy tested and gave a whole bunch of blood so they can tell me how deathly allergic I am to peanuts. And if I am, then I'll just be like, okay, let's continue not eating any nuts. And yeah. if so, I'll probably just continue not eating any nuts because I just don't do it. That really sucks. They're really like the favorite snack food, aren't they? Food, like, and fun. you know what? I know that I'm, I'm, I'm the, I have the, I have the personality type that if I wasn't allergic, I'd be that douchebag who just like shovels fucking peanut butter in my mouth <laughs> by like the spoonful. <laughs> like I know because you use a spoon. <laughs> What? You use a spoon? And just don't like yes, I, I, I do in fact use spoons, <laughs> but more more to the point, I would be that that asshole who just like just eats nothing but peanut butter. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so that message is brought to you by Colin. Um so <laughs> yeah, uh we're gonna try and pad this out because we're not too sure what to talk about today, but I'm sure it will make it super interesting. If anybody can see the visual representation of this podcast, you'll see a massive big spreadsheet on your screen. And oh my god, yes, we are doing something on a spreadsheet format because, yeah, we are really screening the bottom barrel. Spreadsheets are just the most interesting things to look at that of we could course. think of. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> um, before like, get... screw showing art or doing a tutorial. Let's just show a fucking Excel document. Yeah, woo <laughs> Uh, before we get into that mastery and amazingness that is the sale document, um, we're going to talk about what we've done. Um, so, Colin, how busy have you been? Um, so goddamn busy. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave things out because, yeah. like, I, I can't even remember all the things that I have done in the past. What is it like? Two, three weeks now? Because NDAs weeks? are a bitch. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, NDAs are a bitch. Although, still working for a crazy big AAA studio. And like, it, here's the thing. When I'm at work, I walk into work and I sit down and I'm just like, okay, is this what happiness feels like? And I'm just like, probably. I'm not sure, <laughs> but probably. I'm actually really happy doing what I'm doing right now. As, good, un yeah. as uncomfortable as it is because I'm forced to learn like a million new things each week because <laughs> they're just like, hey, can you like do all this 3D shit that you barely know how to do? And I'm just like, yeah, I have no choice but to say yes. So yes, <laughs> doing, like concept art and storyboards and more concept art and like revisions uh -huh. and more revisions. And then like I go home and all I do is fucking freelance work and or like the odd study or two. Yeah. And um, I'm actually I might have said this last time. I'm going to stop freelancing after Christmas. Yeah. At least for at least for a couple of months, just so I can actually get my own stuff out and mm -hmm. start to build up a portfolio again. <laughs> like, yeah. like I for think real. I, I think need I'm, to like I think I'm busy some days, but there's just that a level of business that you hit that is like beyond Thunderdome. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, there's just like so what much way to put it. Like, holy shit, I'm gonna <laughs> use that. <laughs> Yeah, but nobody's nobody's busier than my boss. Or like, uh, like George, yeah. Seriously, like the fact that he's running a, a, a production and he's he's got like a million other things on the go on the side, and mm -hmm. he's dealing with what I and and all the freelancers are doing. Mm -hmm. Like, fucking fuck, how do you do it? And he's just like, I just don't stress. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> easy said, yeah, definitely. <laughs> great for you, demigod person, but I can't. So yeah, fuck. fucking stress. <laughs> yeah, oh, well. although. One of the let's let's do like actually you know what no, I I can't awkward segue segue because you still have to go I was gonna awkward segue into dealing with stress is really really easy when you're disciplined and you can plan well yeah. hence the spreadsheet but anyway before before we go on to that mm -hmm. what have you done in the past several weeks Gordon oh, God um not as much as you have probably because I'm still on like the amateur rank level but yeah um. We have like so many handins up to Christmas. I have kind of two, but anyway. Oh, anyway, so yeah, we have handins up until Christmas, and uh, yeah, it's getting quite busy. I have like two things due next week, and then the week after another thing due because I have to prep a presentation um, for my now end of year project for next year, um, which is why this talk will be so interesting for me because it will learn how to um, spread for time and plan it well. Uh, we have, yeah. to, we have to create a 3D environment. Um, well, I'm, I've chose to create a 3D environment for next year, so I'm doing something sci-fi based, which is going to be really silly, like a um, combination of Doom and Dead Space. Um, like, 
dank murky corridors with lots of low lighting and blood everywhere, um, with doors that don't shut properly. So yeah, <laughs> or shut way too fast on you unless you have the goddamn stasis module. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna do that shit. And uh, then when I first kind of like tried to pitch it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Plus, I'm gonna do like some weird alien character that's gonna run between like you and the camera and stuff. And I was like, that also means that way build a character and anime them and couldn't make a 3D environment. So no, I'm not going to do that because that'll be way too much work. So yeah, so the environment's like my whole project. But yeah, so that, um, studying, I'm working with Suzanne just now. She is teaching me stuff and making me better at art. Yeah, um, so that's awesome. And uh, also, I'm going for a studio visit this week to a AAA animation studio who work on franchises like Call of Duty and Dawn of War, uh, and I'm going to pick their brains and ask them lots of questions and look at Wait, all THQ? No, no, uh, it's Axis Animation. So yeah, Axis Animation are like the blur studios of this side of the world, and they do, like, the new Dawn of War trailer for Dawn of War 3, like, they've done that. Oh, uh, I was just like, yeah, what... Like yeah. what? What expansion pack of Dawn of War did they work on? <laughs> um, yeah, they done like uh, with Halo Five. They done the whole intro cinematic thing where they f- jump at the pelican and like shoot things at the way down the hill. Oh uh, yeah, that scene that like was cool, but no one knew what the fuck was going, going on. on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they like uh, three four three done on the mocap, <coughs> and then sent it across to Access. We done like the interpretation and the renders and made it all shiny and polishing, and good looking. Um, and they do feature films, they do special effects for Doctor Who in Britain. Um, dude, if you can get in there, dude. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, would be, that would be the best. Cause that, like, that's the end goal anyway, so yeah. In a studio like that, you're, that's actually a similar kind of sort of out, um, outsource studio to um, a studio that my friend in uh, Vancouver works at. And, mm-hmm. and he um, uh, has been working on projects for AAA companies that like send them stuff. And he has he has been able to work in like so many different areas, like compositing and 3D, and of course he matte paints because that's what he does mainly, and uh-huh. you know like concept art and whatnot. But totally, dude, like yeah. working in a studio like that or in a studio like Elliot, <laughs> <laughs> you will be you will be thrown into so many different roles, and you will have no choice but to either learn fast or you're, uh-huh. you're fucked. Yeah. You are, yeah, not only do you die, you mm. die like being ground into the fucking earth. So get <laughs> ready, boy. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure at one point, like, I think I'm probably going to fight be a lot better there. So, yeah, that's that's the plan. But, yeah, they're building up the 3D um, department. Because I thought they mainly, because, like, obviously they did 3D um, cutscenes and, and CG stuff. So I thought they were, like, primarily just um, 3D. But they do have, like, a 2D department that they're building up. Um, Pre-production, man. Yeah, yeah, But then if I could do 3D as well, because I'm also learning the shit out of Maya um, and Modo and stuff like that. So I could also, like, you know, do, like, a bit of both. So, yeah. I might also be good at one thing and, like, probably specialize in that. But, yeah, there's no harm in learning 3D because it helps in like, lots of things. So Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if you learn Maya, then learning other programs will be, you know, easier. Mm. Unless it's 3DS Max, which is just confusing. Yeah. Because I mean, like, <laughs> just now, like, I'm test rendering stuff in, like, Unreal. and moving between Unreal Modo and Maya. And, like, they all have, like... Like E is to like scale stuff and R is no R is to, like scale stuff and E is to like roast stuff and W moves and all You know that. what's funny? I still don't know what those shortcuts are like like you know like 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 um like off the top of my head. Ah. If I need to if I need to do one of those things, I just press all of the keys until I get <laughs> what I want. But I'm just like I need to do. scale it quick. Press all the keys. <laughs> and then like I cycle through them like three times until I get to scaling. You which have... begs the question, how do I model so fast if I don't know any of the fucking shortcuts? Yeah, that's but it's because weird. I bang the keys really hard. Oh my god. And then you had the combination of all like four random and you're like, no oh shit. Yeah. Oh shit, I accidentally just like saved the document after deleting everything and then I closed it. Well then, okay, I'm going to go kill myself now. Okay, yeah, awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm going to access this week, so that should be super, super interesting because I'll get to see all their stuff and I'll have to send an NDA before I walk in the door. So I'll get to see all this awesome stuff and they'll be like, how was it? And I'm like, yep. Yeah, yeah talk about <laughs> they saw stuff, and that's all I can say. Moving yeah, on. The, their their wall color was like a really nice shade of green. So yeah, that was cool. That was, yeah, yeah. And they gave us coffee. The things on the walls I can't even talk about. Yeah. So. Oh my god. Um. So yeah, access. Um. And that's been my week, just leading up to Christmas break. Um. And getting some stuff handed in, and then gonna be doing some painting over the break, and yeah, all that shit. So yeah. Anyway, so what will help though is because I'm going into my third year project. And we need to do like a Gantt chart for presentation, like an idea of like how we're going to plan stuff out. Um, yeah, Colin, this 
looks colorful for one, um, but also complex. Uh, the color about. wasn't even my idea. All right. It was my friend's idea. He's just like, yo, why is everything orange? You need a color code. And I was just like, okay. Uh. <laughs> 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 All right, that actually sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So, actually, so... so context, for, context for the viewers, um, for people who are watching this on the... Obviously, if you guys are listening to the audio version, we apologize. This episode is probably aimed more at visual <laughs> representation. <laughs> uh, Colin is, <laughs> Colin is rodeoing in his, 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 his movie. So, yeah, Colin, why did you make this massive big sale thing? What is it we're watching? Tell people. It's... For this, which was my fourth year film, which was uh, very, very large and ambitious and um, Im- fucking impossible to do if you don't plan it. Like, <laughs> yeah. especially being at the level of artist I was at at the time, which was really only a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like I was I was OK, but to pull something off like this with the skills I had, like I had to get good at so many goddamn different things in such a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just going to turn off the audio because it's it's uh, uh, hold on. Yeah. Right. Oh, I can hear I can hear any audio from anime, so it should be fine. I don't, your desktop doesn't share audio; it's just visuals. Right. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so, um, oh my God, now I'm getting Facebook messages. I got just, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I basically had to paint somewhere in the in the range of like 25 to 30 backgrounds, and then like a whole bunch of painted elements, and then learn how to do 3D, and then learn how to composite, learn how to do UI elements like like what we're talking about here. Learn After Effects. Learn you know like special effects. Learn how to do like particle effects learn how to like you know like like animate a character which i hadn't really done much much up until that point and then color the character in toon boom and then apply like lighting effects and after effects and like there's just so much shit i had to learn Uh if i was to you know not manage my time while learning all these programs and learning all this shit like (laughs) i would have gotten like maybe 30 percent of this done yeah so yeah um because obviously, like with most animations, people know like if it's working in between twenty four and thirty frames a second, then for every second of animation, you need between twenty four and thirty frames, which is a hell of a lot of work. And like to be fair, a lot of this animation, um, a, um, um, a lot of the character animation is uh, it's it's pretty simple. Like it's not like like some of it's full, full, uh, full performance. You know, like twelve ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, no, m- most of it's on like threes and fours. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, um, uh, <laughs> a lot of it's like uh, you know held cells and just like cool lighting effects and whatnot. And mm-hmm. then there's like all the actually um, the laser effects, except for this. This is hand drawn, mm-hmm. but the um, the robot shooting laser effects. Those are actually I believe uh, it, it was an effect plugin you can get for After Effects called Saber, oh. which you uh, I, I believe it was used in the Force Awakens. I'm not entirely sure, but it oh, may cool. have been similar to the technology that they used or the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it was like it was a huge project, and now moving this off because it's going to distract me. I'm just going to fuck straight up turn that off. So to to even begin approaching a project like that, I was just like, okay, before I even fucking start drawing. I mean, like I was I was actually an, another thing. I had two semesters, so somewhere in the range of like seven ish eight months to get this thing done. Yeah. Before that, I did like a ton of pre production in the summer, like you know. First storyboard pass. In fact, I think I did two or three because the first couple were terrible. And it was cool. based on a comic that I'd done that I ne- never actually finished, but it was enough to generate boards from. Cool. Um, and then, you know, character designs and whatnot and sort of a pitch. And then I managed to sort of like right before school get all my storyboards into Premiere and sort of kind of time them out. Cool. And it was like fucking six minutes long. Holy shit. <laughs> And um, I brought this into my mentor meeting, and they were just like, yo, that's cool, but holy fucking shit, that is long and, like, intense, mm-hmm. and why would you do that to yourself, and you need to cut this down? And I was just like, okay, yeah, I probably do need to cut it down. So we got it down to, like, three or four minutes. It went up and down over the weeks. Yeah. But um, really early on, I started to do stuff like this giant-ass document. So walking through this really, really quickly, I basically, um, uh, before I got into the film production scene by scene, which is this green circle thing that's super long, cool. basically what I did is I um, listed all of the tasks that I would have to do from pre-production, which is the green thing, to production, which is the blue, and then post-production, which is like like effects and stuff and putting it together. Uh-huh. So pre-production was just like generating a design pack, so like characters and vehicles, environments and whatnot, and uh-huh. then rough storyboards, which would then be put together into a Leica, uh-huh. and then would later be updated with with, you know, rough animation scenes in an animatic. Mm-hmm. And then uh, for some reason this says keep animatic to show finished work. I don't know why that says that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm going to question a lot of this stuff because I wrote it like 
over a year ago. Yeah. Huh? Hold on. No, you know what? I would have... Yeah, slightly over a year ago. I think I wrote this in like late September, early October of last year. Anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, 2D animation process. I figured out you know what I need to do to generate all the 2D animation. Uh -huh. So um, uh, convert my storyboards to uh, to keys in like separate animation scenes, of which there are about 60 or 70 individual ones in which I animated in uh, in Toon Boom. Yeah. Then there was a first pass, which was you know meant to be rough and shitty. Second pass, clean up pass, color pass, and all of these things had to be applied to each individual scene. Which obviously that's like you know all of these passes times 70 scenes. That's a fuckload of passes. Yeah. And so with some scenes, I realized that I could actually get away with just like a held cell, like just one drawing of a character mm -hmm. or like a, a, a like a drawing of a character moving or you like just shifting mm -hmm. um and then there was uh the shadow and light pass and then uh compositing with um 2d background or uh projections 3d projections which is more of a post-production thing so that's actually wrong and then of course i knew that i would have to do some 3d animation because um i had like this uh this hold on where is it this this back this bike model here, which I had to right. composite with a 2D character, and people were like, okay, how the fuck did you actually do that? And I was just like, by moving it frame by frame over oh a period of like two fucking straight days. So yeah, that was uh, probably not the smartest way to do that. But anyway, uh -huh. so I had to basically learn 3D from the ground up because we'd, we'd, we'd had 3D classes in second and I think third year, uh -huh. and I did take them seriously. In fact, I may or may not have either not come to class or been drunk in some of my classes <laughs> no i didn't do that at least i don't think i did yeah <laughs> so i basically like i had to take it seriously and the good thing was my um uh, my group mentor the um the, the guy who kind of walks us through the film process was a 3d guy and mm -hmm. so he i was sort of constantly asking him questions about like am i texturing this right you know mm -hmm. are my uvs okay and i had a friend of uh, a friend of mine sort of help me uv my first object mm -hmm. and then i basically did the other like 50 or 60 Myself and actually, uh, um, the first 3D model slash object slash whatever I did was the bike, uh -huh. and uh, the um, the second, third, fourth up to like the 60th was the inside of this bar, which a lot of people didn't think this was 3D, and I'm just like, wait, this had, 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 this is 3D, guys. This is not a painting. Like, look at that. It's moving. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was um um. Uh, the way I rendered everything and specifically the way I lit everything, it didn't look like like a really terrible 3D model. It just looked like a whole bunch of paintings. Yeah. So that was purely by chance. I did not plan that. It's just the way I knew how to paint at the time and the way I learned how to texture and UV everything. So anyway, um, fuck, we're still in production. Good God. <laughs> it's fine. We'll anyway, so, take your time. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Going through this a little faster. Mm -hmm. uh, in post-production, which is this orange sort of segment, I basically had to break down, okay, for every scene in my film, how do I actually put this scene together in After Effects or Premiere or what other, whatever other compositing program I was using? Mm -hmm. I used Premiere mostly to put the scenes together themselves and color correct everything overall. Mm -hmm. But After Effects to actually assemble the different elements of the scene, like 2D character, 3D background, you know, like lighting effects, particle effects, and that was like mostly it. And but I mean, like lighting and particle effects were like in some of the heavier scenes, it was like twenty or thirty different layers. So like mm -hmm. there was a lot of shit going on. And like I look at this stuff now, and it looks simplistic. But like like to fresh eyes, I I have to keep reminding myself that like oh wow, this actually does look pretty cool. <laughs> um, and then of course there's sound and music, and uh, there was originally going to be a voiceover, but I I could never get it working because like it was just like. I just, it, it didn't fit the film. And so right. I was like, you know what? Scrap it, move on. And there was a lot of things that I did end up having to scrap. Like the fight scene was longer. Like, in fact, the entire credits actually have like the entire fight scene just sort of continuing on in storyboard form. All right. There we go. Yeah, uh, yeah storyboards. There we go. Storyboards and blah, blah, blah. So like this was supposed to be the end of the film, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Um, you know, like, like, anyway, um, so then, uh, this was, uh, so, um, this being my first production plan, production list, I had a priority list, which, which encompassed like weeks one to five ish of first semester. Mm -hmm. So they were complete animatic and lockdown story, comp uh, produce finished frames of animation against backgrounds. That was for like our proof of concept to prove that we, we actually could do one finished scene. Mm -hmm. um, and then finish modeling and texturing bike slash Oakfield during pre-production, which I actually think I did like, which was crazy because I was stressing about it. Like 
like mad. Uh-huh. Then I had to plan and model exterior pans and interior bar texture during pre-production. I only managed to get the interior bar done in 3D, but that was enough because like I could you know paint the rest of the backgrounds outside. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't do any concept art for the inside of the bar except for the stuff that I drawn in the comic. I was just like, okay, make models, put together, texture them, and hope to God it works. <laughs> that was basically my process for that. Uh-huh. Like, like it, this, this all looks cool and official, but it's really haphazard. Like, yeah, for, for serious. Um, and then uh, the other thing that Sheridan really, really helped with Sheridan was the school uh-huh. is uh, um, they had a bunch of set milestone sets. So like a milestone two which was week three of first semester, you had to have your uh, your story treatment and your rough boards done. And then mm-hmm. milestone three was finished boards and script and so on and so forth. And then in this document, I had every milestone and like a summary, like a two word summary of what it actually was. Uh-huh. And so like, like if I ever need, if I ever lost, you know, like, like the handout they gave us, I'd just be like, Oh look, I already copied it in my Excel file. Hooray. Yeah, yeah. Um, so moving into this ridiculous film scene production plan, um, Basically what this is, is every scene in the film. And uh, so obviously we got scene number and then description slash action and scene direction, which is super simple. Like I'm just, I'm just sort of uh, summarizing what happens. Uh So scene one is opening pan. Oak appears or Oak, um, Oak field is the main character. Uh She appears on the speeder. And then in the 2d animation phase, there's like, there's, there's, um, there's no 2d animation and 3d animation, which I'd color coded orange for some strange Uh reason. Uh, Uh, like like the bike goes right, whatever. 2D backgrounds, like I sort of m- mentioned what backgrounds in there. 3D projections, no 3D projections, it's all 2D. Mm-hmm. And then sound effects and visual effects and that's it. And I went through every scene in the film like that for like, how many scenes is this? Like 80 fucking scenes. Wow. Some of these were cut. I added other ones. Like for example, up here I added the outer space shots to sort of establish like what the location actually is. It's not on a planet. It's on a space station that has like an interior and a habitat and environment all- and all, you know, like all that stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm actually, I still don't think that's 100% clear in the film, but you know, like whatever, I don't even care. I'm done critiquing my fucking work. Screw <laughs> it. Um, so that's, that's this. Like this was sort of production plan number one. Uh-huh. And I was just like, okay, cool. This is, this is okay. And I, I the other thing I did at, at, um, below here is just sort of um, to give myself an overall sort of, you know, sense of how much work I had to do. I had 80 total scenes in the film Scenes with full performance 2D animation or effects 53 and number of individual 2D paintings and 3D projected uh, exterior pans, which Uh I didn't end up doing. I could just do it with paintings. Um, Number of fully textured 3D models, two, and the number of 3D projected interior environments, one. Uh And so I basically had to sit down with myself and say, can you actually do this Uh at the time? The answer was, I don't fucking know. Yes. <laughs> and so I was just like, all right, I don't know if I can do this because I've never done anything either, even close to this before. Like, mm-hmm. like I think the amount of work in this film may rival the amount of work that I that I did sort of like in like the rest of the program overall, excluding mm-hmm. life drawing. Like, like every assignment compiled together doesn't even come close to the to the amount of work that I had to get done for this film. So yeah. like that's saying <clears throat> something. Like three whole years are dwarfed by one year yeah. again mine is life drawing because i don't actually count that as as assignments or work mm. um so this thing was super confusing and scary and i didn't like looking at it for any longer than like two or three minutes at a time <laughs> and i was just like i need to make another one that's a little uh a little more sort of you know doable so i made this really really simplified version i bl- i uh, oh no hold on wait a second no yep yeah, simplified version so this was like ultra simple, no numbers. And I was like, yeah, I I can deal with this. Mm -hmm. And basically all it was, was my personal deadlines in red on the left. And then my, um, uh, not my, this, uh, the, the school's uh, milestone deadlines. And so I basically had it blocked out like week 13. I think I did this on week 12 of Mm -hmm. semester one and then uh, I had like week 13, week 14, and then my Christmas break weeks and then week one to 14. And then week 15 is industry day. And Mm -hmm. you're, you gotta be done this film, bro. Yeah. And, um, so for my personal deadlines, basically what I did is I had, um, hold on, what is this? 2D complete. Is that 2D animation or paintings? I can't remember. Complete first third. Basically by the end of the Christmas break, after an, after an entire semester of working, I wanted to have the entire first third of the background, oh, sorry, entire first third of the film done, mm-hmm. which was mostly 2D backgrounds and 3D composite effects and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I almost did that. I was like 90% of the way by like the last day of Christmas break. And I mm-hmm. came in and I was just like, look at all the work I did over Christmas. And a lot of other people had done the same and even more had done fuck all over Christmas. So a lot of people <laughs> were starting to freak out at that point. Yeah. But I was just like, 
like I got a third of the film done. And because I got that done, I was just like, dude, I might be able to animate like 50 scenes in two weeks then maybe nice. kind of sort of possibly. <laughs> and so for, I, I actually gave myself until week five to finish 2d animation. I think I actually finished it on week four because like I was, uh, <laughs> I was staying over in Oakville on my friend's couch for like two or three days out of oh, the God. week and sleeping in the studio. And like when I actually did go home, I was writing from Mississauga to Oakville, which if anybody knows is like, like a, they're uh, they're they're right beside each other, Sheridan's and Oakville. I was riding like 14k one way, so I was getting exercise in. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing is, finished 2D animation on week five. That was only finished sort of drawn animation, like you know completed. Yeah. And I had another two weeks after that uh, to um, to color it, to sort of finalize the animation and okay. sort of color fill it. Um, I think at this point uh, we had our first slash second year helper meeting where basically all the fourth years are in the studio and all of the first and second years who want to like sort of help out in a fourth year film and sort of learn how it's done, blah, blah, blah. They all come upstairs, they look at our stuff and then they sign up for people's films. Mm -hmm. I had like <laughs> somewhere in the range of like 15 to 20 people sign up. Oh and I was like, look at all these people that, that are going to do my film for me. Jesus. And I like, I felt really bad about this, but I ended up using exactly zero of them. I just wanted to finish it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like the, um, the problem was to, uh, to teach them the people that were going to be working on my film, the stuff they needed to know to yeah, actually yeah, yeah. be, and it wasn't it wasn't a question of can they draw this character can they animate this character it was more like i need to teach them maya or i need to teach them after effects if mm -hmm. they want to composite and like for me to figure this out on myself or on myself by myself it's it's a lot easier than sitting down with like eight people and being like okay does everybody understand because <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't even understand half this shit so <laughs> yeah um so that was my that was sheet number two and then Number three. So this is when I was getting into actual animation production. I've never and seen I, this one yet. I was mostly finished the paintings. And so, like, uh, again, everything's broken down by scene number. And, like, it's, it's not just scene number, though, because I, I can't associate a number with a painting. So I had to write, like, this is the epic pan. This is the probe scene. This is the bar corner. Mm -hmm. This is the top down. And because there was only... Uh, there was two top-down scenes. I could actually get away with calling just one top-down. Mm -hmm. And then I think at this point I actually hadn't finished all the 3D stuff, but it was close. And then for my music, I had actually contacted Mick Gordon. I was just like, hey, psst, can I like use the, the, um, the, the, I think it was the Doom soundtrack. No, no, no. It was, um, the Wolfenstein soundtrack. Can I oh. use this? And he was just like, yeah, cool, whatever. <laughs> it's just don't tell, <laughs> don't tell Bethesda. And I was like, okay, um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, and then, and then with my, uh, with my 2d animation scenes, I, I still had like 74 at this point. I'd only been able to cut it down by about six from 80 and I'd added a bunch. Hmm. Um, and I'd actually color coded them by like, you know, green is like, is like, like, like a single held cell of a character. Yellow is moderate difficulty and orange is something that I might've had to get someone to help me with or hmm. someone to rough it out first. And I actually did get a friend of mine to rough out. I think it was maybe two or three. Through two or three scenes that were like really difficult mm. except like he was he was obviously doing his own film and he was having his own sort of you know production issues and trying to get stuff out mm. and um <laughs> actually that friend i ended up doing a bunch of backgrounds for him in return so we we kind of had stuff like that going on as well yeah. like people were starting to help each other with their films but i found that i was dishing out a lot more help than i was getting <laughs> which was fine because yeah. like because i planned my my time so well i had time to spend on on this kind of stuff yeah and um, I also like, you know, like you, you might think at this point I'm some kind of monster, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just doing all this insane amount of work. I was giving myself breaks. I was occasionally playing video games. Uh -huh. Some of the days that I that I spent at my friend's place or friends' places, I should say, uh -huh. uh, in Oakville, like sometimes we just like sat down and watched The Office because we were all friggin' exhausted yeah. or like went out for dinner or played Smash or something. And uh -huh. like we like... Like, like we, <laughs> we had some semblance of lives, yeah. but some of us had more lives, more of a life than others. And I had almost none, which was fine. Cause yeah. this, the, I mean, like, like the year was about getting the damn film done. And, you know, at the same time, like putting a portfolio together too, which was mostly the film. Mm -hmm. So, uh, fuck, I completely lost track of what the hell I was doing. Um, so yeah, I, 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 um, I, I also thought it was really, really important to not only block out sort of what individually everything was, but also tally it. So I had like a good 
solid understanding of how many animation scenes I had to do. And I was only oh. counting the ones with real frame by frame animation. So anything that wasn't a held cell was counted. So that was, that was uh, 57 scenes and then 20 paintings and then three total models, which were really just compiled together into one environment. I was just sort of counting them as individual models just because yeah. I needed to sort of get it, get it through my head, how many I had to texture. Uh -huh. I actually think I textured most of the bar in like, I'm going to say a weekend. And this was including learning how to fucking paint in mud box. Oh my God. <laughs> you use mud <laughs> box as well. Box Jesus. Too. Like I downloaded 3d code and mm. actually paid for the student version, but it was so difficult to learn. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I have mud box. I'm just going to use it. Yeah. And I got decent results. Like it looked okay for the most part, even yeah. though, Half of my models were like the UVs were fucked, and mm -hmm. all I did is like in the in the model itself, anything that had like like bad polys, I just rotated it so it didn't face. <laughs> <the camera. laughs> and like that, that's not even counting all the models that I like I, I like cut faces out of the back and the bottom to save texture space and whatnot. Oh uh, yeah. And then I was also thinking at this point about music, which I mentioned, but sound effects as well, because like I could have gotten someone to do all my sound effects for me, but at the end I was just like, wait a second. I finished two weeks early. I have time to do my own sound effects. And so I was just like, fuck yes. And at this point, I was still considering doing a voiceover with my main character being all dramatic and narrating shit. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, if the story doesn't read without a character, mm -hmm. you know, like, ex like spouting exposition every, like, two seconds, like, yeah. it's, it's a bad story. And mm -hmm. it does read, so who cares? Yeah. So uh, my final terrifying sheet, which look, was starting to look more and more like the Excel sheet, just yeah. like a much more concise version of it. So I divided my film into two halves, mostly just because I didn't want to look at like a super long horizontal fucking thing that was terrifying. <laughs> so I just I cut it in half and then just put one above the other because that just made sense format wise. Um, well, this was the well, sheet. I like the one in the bottom right that says credits, then booze and freedom. Yeah, happy <laughs> face. And then burn it even though i can't burn a digital document <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the way i the way i um sort of put this together is again similar to the excel sheet i had all of my scene numbers plus a very short description of what the scene was mm -hmm. one to whatever this is 76 uh -huh. um and then along the right how i was breaking down all of the all of the scenes individually was like 2d animation in green mm -hmm. uh backgrounds in blue which which also included 2d and 3d just because it made sense to put them together because mm -hmm. they're all backgrounds and the 3d backgrounds looked like paintings so hooray mm -hmm. um and then compositing uh um any scenes with the bike in it i had and any scenes with um uh ui or screens or holograms in it were, were sort of in there and then visual effects which was i think every scene mm -hmm. and then energy blasts and 3d camera moves which were really difficult because uh um, I had to really you know, like render them out, make sure all the all the all the frames were in the same folder and whatnot. Just really complicated stuff, and then sound, and then scene complete and whatever. And all of the all of the um uh, the uh, the, uh, the darkened cells or cells with you know like just gray in them were cells that I didn't have to worry about for that specific component. So up here in the 2D animation thing, like all the all the grayed out cells are cells with no 2D animation whatsoever, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. And then of course I had reuse uh, scenes for backgrounds, reuse for animation as well, because I can't remember the scene. Uh, there were a couple of scenes where like I animated a hand going forwards. And then for the, for like two scenes later, I could use the same animation, just play it in reverse and would it would look, you know, like I just reanimated the thing, even though I didn't. Ooh. So, um, uh, what the hell is this? Why is this by itself? Oh, the exterior explosion. That was the only scene in the second half that didn't have any 2D animation in it. That's right. Okay. I'm just trying to remember what the hell I was even doing. <laughs> How did I put this together? Uh, let's see. Two paintings. Just trying to read this. Oh, yeah. Then I had asset, um, asset estimates. This was one of the older versions of the sheet. Uh, this was like December 7th. And then by like March, this entire thing was, you know, yellow and green. And then mm -hmm. like by very beginning of April, it was all green. And I had like, you know, a couple weeks left to go. And I was like, nah, I can do my own sound and shit. And yeah, that's that's pretty much how I organized my film. It's like meticulous you know, every time I sort of got bored at looking at one sheet or it became obsolete, I just made another one mm -hmm. and sort of figured out ways either by going on YouTube and or just Google and looking at how people had organized stuff uh -huh. or just like asking people like, does this look good? Can uh -huh. you tell what's going on? Mm -hmm. And they were just like, yeah, sure. Like, can you tell what's going on? And I'm like, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I basically had to figure out a way for myself that would sort of, you know, like like the, a way I could organize all of the all of the information and look at it and be like, OK, I can tell what's going on. 
I might have to rework this a bit. Like I think this sheet took a couple iterations to finally get right, as uh-huh. did the uh, um, the I think the the third one also took a couple to sort of get it to a place where I was happy with it. Uh-huh. The Excel was just an Excel document. I did it once, and then the other one with the with the weak numbers was just like meh. But that's basically it. That's how I organize my film, and that's how to get something really, really big and crazy and stupid done by yourself done. Uh-huh. And uh, if only studios were this organized. And yeah, by yeah. studios, I mean like you know, not Elliot for one, because Elliot is a really tightly run ship. And there are definitely big studios out there that are really, really organized. But yeah, yeah a lot of studios are not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, but that's good to see that <clears throat> there is a process and. It was something that you had to constantly refine, like you didn't get it right first time, and you know that something that was like a, an evolving document that changed as you went through the project. Um, and I'm assuming you kept um, like a sketchbook of some sort as like a kind of thing you had to hand in alongside the animation. Or? Uh, mm, not really, actually. Like I, I was drawing in a sketchbook at the time, even yeah. though I, I filled maybe like. I don't know, <laughs> 15 pages over the course of the entire year because oh I was God. touching it. But, um, so what was the, I what, think, what, see the academic side, like your theory? What, I mean, were you having oh, it? academic side. Holy oh. fuck. Okay. Oh. This might actually blow some minds. So oh. alongside all of this work, mm-hmm. we had an additional two electives per semester to take. So four in total mm-hmm. throughout the year. And, uh, um, I, I'd actually left all the easy electives until the end. So like cinema of horror was one of them where one of the animation teachers basically nerds out about horror films, the entire class for all semester. And we watched stuff like, you know, horror of Dracula and, um, <laughs> the Blair witch project. And then the other one, what was the other one first semester? Oh yeah. That one was difficult. It was like an essay course and there was presentations and shit. And I was just like, Oh, <laughs> so I think that's what it was. Yeah. But yeah, like dealing with academics alongside all of this, mm-hmm. I actually don't know how I did it. Like, yeah. I don't know how anybody did it. Like really, <laughs> that's good I mean, there were other yeah. people with projects that were this ambitious that also got them done. Maybe not quite this ambitious, but, mm-hmm. but close. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they dealt with it. Like mm-hmm. I'm assuming similar to this or they must've had some other way of organizing themselves. Cause like having to deal with like multiple essays and a presentation alongside a film production that you're doing by yourself like yeah how the how the fuck <laughs> it's difficult it's good i mean like it's obviously when you work in <clears throat> projects when you're down there in a studio it is solely that you're working in a team effort and you have your own part that is done but again you know yourself this stuff prepares you for studios have production managers for precisely this reason yeah. like <laughs> but this stuff also prepares you for like stuff like working at deadlines and organizing your work and handing in on time and you upset. ever go off by yourself too, freelancing this these are the skills you need like you know like forget about people skills for a second just organizational skills like yeah. time management like it like it, it sounds stupid when people are like oh you gotta manage your time in school yeah like there's a reason like I, I like i remember thinking it was stupid like yeah whatever i know how to manage my time and then i yeah. missed like three assignments that's a lie <laughs> I, I never missed an assignment in all my time at sheridan yeah except for Bundy's year in which I failed everything because I stopped going to class. Oh my god! <laughs> but um, that uh, thank God that year didn't count because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten into animation. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, that I mean, was my one year to screw up. But actually, it was cool because up until that point, I was a dumb teenager and I'd never really been hit with anything that r- was really like, oh shit, this is real, this is serious. Mm. So it's a good thing that I had my screw up in that year. Yeah. And since then, I haven't really ever you fucked could, up majorly. You push yourself anything. since then to make sure that you're hitting your deads on this year. Yeah. yeah. And you're content to push yourself because obviously everybody knows how fucking talented you are. So, yeah. yeah. Everybody except me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the everybody general... Except part. for the artist in question who's constantly questioning themselves. Yeah, but that's like when you went to see John Paul Dory at like Edge Control and he was showing you some of his early stuff saying, yeah, this stuff's pretty basic and it's not very good. And you were like, who the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> are you looking at your art? Oh my God, John, okay. what are you doing? Like, like for real, looking at his early stuff and looking at my early stuff, there is definitely a difference, like yeah. for sure. But I think when he says early stuff, I think he meant like, like I don't know for sure, but his mm-hmm. early stuff at Blizzard, for example, yeah. where he was getting weeks to or i don't know if it was weeks like this is a complete you know assumption weeks yeah. to work on an illustration mm-hmm. you know blah 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 or even if he was freelancing for them in studio which is which is possible depending on the studio you're at but yeah, yeah. like um the stuff i'm doing for you uh, <laughs> i mean i don't know <laughs> yeah cut that part out <laughs> i'll be fair i'm gonna be i'm actually gonna put a comical <laughs> and like in the middle <laughs>
<laughs> and then I'll be like, whoops, yep, almost mentioned. But you know what? It's not even like I could probably say it publicly and people will be like, oh, cool. But I'm just being really careful because yeah. it's my first damn AAA job. And it's also like if it was an existing project and like – I'd be I'd be fine with it, but because it's a new IP, it's just yeah. Ugh. You're trying to be really more to come after Christmas, guys. Yeah, I'm sure Colin will be able to have interest start leaking stuff. Over, but yeah, yeah, we're not leaking stuff project wise, just like leaking the goddamn name of the company because like yeah. I could say there's, there's no there's nothing wrong with it. It's just for my own peace of mind. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, but with the stuff I'm doing for this particular company, insert name here, like <laughs> it, it's really really most of it's really fast like we gotta we were, we're producing concepts quickly mm -hmm. there's not a lot of painting it's mostly you know technical a lot of industrial design kind of drawing mm -hmm. it's all really fun stuff though like well, it's not like basically. draw a realistic chair yeah. 10 times and texture it or whatever you know it's like draw this cool you know stuff that's mm -hmm. way cooler than a chair yeah even though even the chairs that we design are cool <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean like that and that's then like like actually speaking to something Joe Morrow said at edge control mm -hmm. I am never against drawing a boring thing because that boring thing Might be like the loot box that everybody sees when they open it in overwatch, you know yeah. Like whoever designed that loot box They've probably seen that prop or that game asset more than any other asset. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. So you better design that boring ass thing well and you better put everything you got into it because you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that makes sense, man. Like, I mean, definitely, even, like, when you think it's, like, grunt work and you're doing, like, totally all kind of stuff, like, you know, like, oh, I'm going to draw grass and I'm going to draw these bricks and stuff. But, yeah, they could be part of a level or part of an area that people walk in and out constantly when they're fighting. But, yeah, man, it's, it's all, it's work. <laughs> you're getting to draw art as a living, so, yeah, you can't Getting really paid for it. And not even, I don't, um, uh, not even getting paid as a junior. Like, huh. George was like, yeah, dude, like, junior pay is, like, you know, like like 800 bucks a week you're not getting paid that you're getting paid more and i was just like really i thought i was a junior he's just like well technically yes mm -hmm. but you're not getting paid as a junior like you don't have intermediate or senior experience mm -hmm. but but like like actually it's cool the way george judges uh i'm, I'm totally segueing here holy mm -hmm. fuck no. <laughs> um uh the way george judges people which he actually just explained to me sort of in full mm -hmm. is um uh, instead of just paying everybody the same uh -huh. and you know blah 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 he judges people that he hires on into a studio by their market value and uh -huh. how he does that is he's like okay first of all does the person have like the set of skills required to do the job well uh -huh. if yes cool whatever then he goes by personality attitude uh, you know perceived work ethic so like if you see someone who has like a you know like a decent portfolio whatever uh -huh. you know cool if you see someone who like brought in a film like mine or several of the others that were done during fourth year, he'll be like, okay, I, th I think this person knows how to kill themselves. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Market value goes up in that case. If yeah. you're, if you're judging by George's scale, mm -hmm. and there's a couple, there was a couple other minor criteria that he goes by and he's like, okay, so based on all that mm -hmm. compared to all the other people I have employed, what should I pay this person? Mm -hmm. And you know, like in my case, it was a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of other people in the studio are obviously being paid the same as me, which is totally fine. Like I am not a special snowflake, but it's yeah. just like, like the point I'm making is there's a way to judge like a, like what a person should actually being paid be paid yeah and um it's not two dollars an hour <laughs> yeah well maybe should like, i tell that story <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you know the, what wait a second i'm gonna open the email <laughs> oh god oh god okay so context for people who already know how the art world works because as artists you're probably well aware of what's going on but if you're not an artist and you listen to this then Thanks for joining in. Um, but also, people tend to think that they can hire people for fucking no money and expect them to do stellar work and hand it in quickly um, on the basis that they're going to get exposure or no money. So, yeah, it's... I got this huge dumb <sighs> smile on my face, but I'm still trying to find the fucking email. Oh, my God. Like, it's so... Wait a... Where is it? <laughs> uh, oh, oh my god i found it cool okay, okay so i'm not going to name names obviously but basically uh <laughs> so um uh I'm, i i gotta tread lightly here i don't wanna, i don't want to insult anybody blah 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 but it, this 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 is a good learning experience so mm -hmm. let's say you're an illustrator you're in my position by my position meaning very new industry professional maybe mm -hmm. even not even professional just blah 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 mm -hmm. but you're you've got stuff up on, on, on art station and you're starting to get you know the occasional email about like hey do you want to work on my game project in which case <laughs> you know like cool that looks awesome and if it's paid and it paid well then awesome cool yeah but be advised you are going to get emails like this mm -hmm. so um this uh this one guy's like hey i checked your your portfolio i thought you might be interested in working my project here's the project let me know if you are take care sounds legit i was mm -hmm. just like okay sound um sound interesting oh my god i wrote like an essay yeah um 
but I was explaining my situation. I'm currently engaged in several freelance projects at the time as well as a full-time studio job, mm -hmm. but I'll be free to take on more work in about a month or two. So basically I was saying like, I can't work now, mm -hmm. but you know, your project looks interesting. I think I'll be able to pull off the style. Here's a couple examples of my work that would work for this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. You know, as professional as I can be. Mm -hmm. And, I was, and, th and then, of course, I'd also like to ask, what approximately is your budget for this job? I charge by the hour or per finished asset for this oh. kind of project uh -huh. with a set number of, re of, re of revisions for each illustration. Uh -huh. You know, can, all of this is contained in my contract, which, you know, like it's it's nothing special. There's no legal jargon. I write my contract in like grade four language, mostly <laughs> so I can understand it. Yeah. But also people that have never seen it before but go like, oh, cool, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then he sends me a copy of the game, which I couldn't play, but I w was able to watch it on YouTube because it was an iOS mm -hmm. thing and I don't have an Apple phone. Right. And then he was like, uh, um, the best offer we've, we've gotten so far, I'm not even going to say the amount of money, but it, it is in like the very low, like couple of thousand. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. like, are, do you need like, you know, like a couple of paintings? Cause like, that's totally doable, you mm -hmm. know, two or three K like, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, he said, um, we have a few times more budget than this, mm -hmm. but we are looking for a revenue share partner for the long term first. And we can't find that. We'll probably go for the 2K outsource option. And I was just like, OK, hold on. Revenue share automatically raises a red flag because that yeah. means that you have any more money than that. Yeah. And, I, and then, of course, um, he, uh, he sent all the game assets over. Ad admittedly, they uh, they were kind of placeholder. A lot of them look like they'd just been ripped off of Google Images, but that's because they didn't have an artist. I couldn't fault them for that. Like it was yeah. fine. They were looking for someone to basically go over everything. Mm -hmm. By everything, I mean like three, four hundred assets, and like wow. turn them all into like you know basically Blizzard level illustrations, which we worked out later was was what kind of style he wanted. Uh -huh. And I was like, so thanks, thanks for shooting the assets over. Approximately how many assets are you going to need for a budget of this low amount of money? I'm also noticing some fairly distinct style differences from asset to asset. Uh -huh. Some seem based on photos, whereas others are simpler and look closer to the style you're going for. Uh -huh. uh, blah blah blah. Um, and then of course he gave me the amount of assets, and I was just like. Are, are you looking for an artist to completely redo all the assets in the game or bring them into the same style range? If so, then this short amount of money over a period of a couple of months probably isn't going to be enough. Uh -huh. I, I worked out some basic math and I was just like, this is going to be like five to 10 an hour if I was to charge myself hourly. Yeah. And I was just like, normally, you know, for a project like this, you'd be paying a freelancer 25 to 30 an hour minimum. Yeah. The only reason I know that is because that's what we're, and I think it's uh, at work. It's somewhere in like the 30 to 35 range. Yeah. Um, that's what people who work for, you know, like f f usually in the industry are, that, that's like, that's like base level pay. It can go up and down from there. Yeah. Uh, but I was just like, no, this is fairly industry standard. And like, you know, if you want to get work that looks like this, you're going to be, have to be paying that. Like, that's my point. Yeah. And I, you know, I was going into style stuff being like, if you want this, you know, highly rendered style, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have to get more money anyway. <laughs> Um, and, he, and, and then he answered, he was like, yeah, we're redoing all the assets and, uh, looking towards stylized realism. Mm -hmm. I was starting to think at this point, does he even know what stylized realism is? And I was yeah, just like, yeah. blizzard, blizzard is stylized realism. That's yeah. like the best example of I can think of. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, at this point, I don't think I'm going to be able to move, move forward with the project, you know, uh, redoing this 350 plus assets for the budget you currently have a result in a very low hourly wage or extremely low payment per asset for a single artist, mm -hmm. which is obvious. Like, like none of this is coming as a surprise, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, but then I was like, you know, you, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck if you go with something like a style that's simpler or mm -hmm. more cartoony. But even then, this very low amount of money is not going to go very far when it comes to producing the amount of work you're looking for. Yeah. You know, art takes time and money to develop, especially in a game development setting. And I'm assuming because this was this was this guy's first game, mm -hmm. you know, he might not know a whole lot about art and whatnot. And uh, and then, of course, he drops the bombshell. He's like, thank you for sharing your thoughts. The reason is that cheap Eastern European countries do quality work for 2 to $10 hourly. Oh, my gosh. And I was just like, hold on. Wait a oh. second. What, you, so you're one of these types? Oh, oh no. Oh. Son of a bitch. I was just like, I shouldn't even continue. But I was just like, you know what? I feel like getting up on a soapbox and just being like, dude. That's kind of not okay. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, I was just like, you know, unfortunately, even if that's true, and, and, and at this point, I actually asked George for advice. I was just like, I don't even think I should be, you know, replying to this guy. But if yeah. I do, what the fuck should I say? And he's basically like, tell him to go to an Eastern European country and find people willing to work for that amount of compensation. And I was just like, no artist I know personally or you know, online, on Facebook, anywhere would ever work for that amount of money, yeah. two to 10 an hour period. And I was just like, if someone does do that, you're going to be getting like 
fucking first year art fundies level stuff. Yeah. And like you're and I was just like, at that point, your game's going to take a dive and blah, blah, blah. But, hey, but wait, it gets worse. Because <laughs> then he sends me two screenshots that he found from ArtStation of people. Hold on. You know what? I think I, I, can, I, think I can still open these. Oh, well, I can. Some dude was like, normally I charge $3 an hour. I suggest next solution. I will work one full day, 8 to 10 hours, and you will pay for this day. Blah, blah, blah. And like I, I, I couldn't read his name because I, it was in uh, – I, I don't know what the Russian alphabet is called. It's like Cyrillic or something, but right. clearly a Russian name. And I was just like, oh. And then the second one was something similar. And I was just like, well, in that case, like, you know, then if that case – <laughs> go for those people then because there's they're willing to work for practically nothing but you know like I, I i am making an assumption here but be advised you won't have much luck finding anyone in north america or i would have assumed europe but i guess you know western europe or australia or anywhere like that who are going to do professional level work for under 25 an hour which is low like that's that's like maybe because you're Canadian, you maybe thinks you know you've got a bit of a, a bad. I don't, I don't even think you knew my nationality. I, I don't <laughs> even know if it's on our station. Like, <laughs> it might be, but like Canada is North America. Like we're basically we're, we're an economic appendage of the states. We are yeah. the U.S. Yeah. And uh, I was just like, cheap and quality are relative to a point, but the lower your standards get, the lower you know the resulting outcome will be. And if you pay cheap for art, the art you get you will cheap, and that will be cheap, and that will affect the popularity of your product. Yeah. And like, you know, the conversation went on for another, you know, two or three emails. And, and, and of course, like, like one of one of his responses were, I think you're right. But a better a better measurement of that would be skill of artist plus time they put in instead of just money. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk smash. OK, so I got, I got I'll got my, we've got we've got 10 minutes. Let's go. Cool. So I'll get muscle box with this. Right. So this is a thing that has resonated for years where. He's probably talking about a small minority of people who call themselves artists because most people who can draw a head and a body can call themselves an artist, right? So he's probably looking at guys who have a full day, a full day job plus like whatever else, and they're doing this art thing on like a side line. This isn't. He's probably not talking about like a fully working professional level artist that is working and making art for a living. Like he's probably talking about people who, in their spare time, draw random shit and put it on DeviantArt and call it like finished work that is worthy of paid. Now, I'm not saying the guys shouldn't be getting paid also for the work, but he's trying to compare them to people like yourself who are studio level artists who need to be bringing <laughs> in a level of work and money that keeps them sustained in a lifestyle, which is paying for your rent, paying for your food, your electricity. Your totally, man. All that shit. Like money does not grow in trees. People cannot live of exposure. You need to feed yourself. You need to clothe yourself. Like, I mean, you've told me, no, I'm going to tell people in the podcast, but you've told me what your rent is roughly per month, and that's a lot of fucking money, like, to live in the inner city. It's it's not as much as, you know, a lot of people that are living actually downtown are paying, but, you know, yeah. like, it's, it's, a, it's, uh, it's a substantial I'm gonna say chunk of your wage. It's, 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 um, I would say it's about a quarter of what I make every month. Yeah, and like, that's what I'm saying, like, you know, if, if you were having to earn that without a job and freelancing was your full-time gig, $2 an hour, like, what is that, how is... How much your rent does that pay? Two dollars an hour. That'd be about maybe half my rent. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you were lucky to get the money, you know. And like, yeah. That's the thing. Then that's half your rent. Okay, you need to get the other half. You also need to feed yourself for a whole month. You need to fucking exactly. clothe yourself, get to work, drink, fucking go out, socialize, pay for other things apart from that. Like keep yourself sane and not working constantly like a fucking you know. Yeah. Like I don't want to say this, but wage slave. Yeah, and that's the thing as well is that you know you're taking this freelance work. You've got this big stack of money, but then the great thing with that is that, like, up to Christmas or after Christmas, you can say, you know what, I'm going to take two fucking weeks off and, like, enjoy myself because I can do because I have this extra money or I have enough to pay my rent and not have to worry about paying blah, 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 blah. Um, like, I know, like, a story I told my friends years ago is, like, one of the guys who um, tutored me earlier on in the days when I started to learn physics and stuff like that for engineering. Um, he had, like, two degrees and he worked as a software engineer and he basically just worked when he wanted. Like, he developed software for companies, um, like energy companies, made a shit ton of money for like so much of the year, <laughs> and then basically said, right, I'm taking the rest of the year off, and he could do that, because he made so much money, because he was... God damn it! Yeah, but he knew like what his hourly rate was, how much he should be getting paid every day, um, and then he was so... He so had off. standards, is your Yeah, point. exactly, and then because he was so sought after, you know, he 
he worked for six months, and then the six months he was like, I'm not going to work because I don't have to because I've made enough money for the year. So and you can go off and do your own personal stuff, which is what really keeps you sane. Oh, he just he just raised his kids, so that was his extra time. So there you go. Yeah, but um, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's the thing you can do. But when people pay you such a low rate, not only does it put a bad standard on artists for bad practices and comments when it comes to other people getting hired, it also means that people just expect that of you and think that. You know, especially if you try to maybe do the next project. Say you say you work for this guy. Say you're not Colin Zero. You're some random guy working for him. And you I'm get, like I'm like a like like a student who's kind of desperate for money, yeah, right out of school. Yeah. I mean, I'm also right out of school, but like in a, like a, like a different version of me, for but example. You're, yeah, you're wiser of the world. But if somebody isn't, and then they work for this, and then you go to the next project, state, for instance, and they're like, okay, I need you to do this. And you're like, okay, let's renegotiate. Let's get more money on board he'll be like no why should i give you more money because you've, you've already signed this one contract that says you're a revenue share partner yeah. no we haven't you know started to get more money on the project but mm -hmm. don't worry it's coming yeah and then you're just like okay and yeah. then like you know next project you're like hey dude um I'm I'm, I, think, I, think, I think I'm gonna fuck off if you don't give me any money. And then he's like, "No, stay!" And you're like, "There'll be money." And you're just yeah. like, "All right, one more project." And, and then by yeah. that time, you're broke and you're you're horribly in debt. But I mean, yeah. I, I will say a couple things in this guy's defense. Mm -hmm. Number one, from the way it sounded like he was talking, this was this was the first time he had done this, mm -hmm. and so there there is a chance that he was just like, admittedly, really, really unfortunately ignorant about how the like the way things work uh -huh. and sort of how much you have to pay for quality art yeah. and i can understand that uh -huh. but what i what i can't understand i mean like of course i can forgive it i don't really care uh -huh. but just like like sort of the uh <laughs> the head stuck in the mud mentality of like yeah but like i can go to the eastern european countries uh -huh. whatever those countries are i'm like okay hold on Living standards in, let's say, Russia, uh -huh. you know, I, I don't know how they how they're doing economically compared to us, but yeah. are probably not that different to the rest of the world. Like, uh -huh. I, I'm I'm saying this from a place of ignorance because I honestly don't know. Yeah. But like, you can't live on fucking five an hour in yeah. Russia or yeah. any of those like you know like any of those other countries over there. Uh -huh. Um, I'm I'm struggling to think of it. Like Ukraine, for example, or yeah. you, you know, Slavia any, or something like that. Or, or, yeah. Iran. Exactly, and like or like I don't know if Poland counts as Eastern European. I guess it kind of does, but yeah. Poland has like a shitload of like awesome AAA artists. You CD know, like Project Red. I mean, CD Project Red, or like that fucking Wojtek Fus guy who you know yeah. founded Level Up and uh -huh. is like my age or I think slightly older and is doing some crazy fucking shit. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I know what like, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. and 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 um, actually, uh, one of the other guys is I think like younger than both of us yeah. and like he's doing crazy shit he's from that part of the world too and mm -hmm. like there's no way you're gonna get guys like that who will even take you seriously once the numbers come out on the table oh, yeah. and you start to get stubborn about them and uh there was one more thing i wanted to say in this guy's defense um people are probably going to this podcast saying said go and why you defend them call for god's sake <laughs> well i mean like i i do try to play both sides as much as yeah, i can you yeah. know, obviously you know like 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 <laughs> i guess the objectively correct side is no you don't ask someone to to you know work for that level yeah. of money but at the same time i'm just like okay how do i understand this this person's side of the argument and the only thing i can think of really is that it's just ignorance they, they, that yeah, you just they either know. haven't taken the time to figure it out mm -hmm. or just haven't been around and made enough games and yeah. done this long enough to know how much this shit costs so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's, it's the thing is as well like even looking back to the example this was years back but someone wanted a friend to make uh, a comic for like a full comic for them like i don't know say 13 odd pages for one issue like two issues or something um for free for literally for for no money and uh you know was when, this person gonna be making money off of it though well I, no I, as far as i know i think on the, at the time it was something to do like it was a personal gift for somebody um and they wanted to give so but they wanted to make it look like they drew it so they were like you don't have to try as hard you can just make it as quick as you can um so it was basically spec work then more yeah or less? basically but then like when they were speaking to the guy they were like you know are you basically wanting to, to do this for free and they were like yeah and he was like well, I'm not going to work for free. That's ridiculous. And he was like, what do you mean ridiculous? Like, you are an artist, though, you know? And that's really the, like, the first part of the sentence. And the guy was like, yeah, I'm an artist. And he's like, well, you get to draw. You get to do what you love. So why do you have to be paid for it? And he was like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I think, the, I think the best way to bookend this conversation is just for me to, um, I guess, basically, I'm not, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, like, paraphrase my final email. Yeah. Basically what I said, which summarizes 
more or less everything of, of sort of what we what we've been talking about uh-huh. is um I hate to say it, but compensation really is that important because we, we had been discussing the fact that compensation maybe isn't that important. But I, mean, I was just like, yeah. it's borderline like I didn't want to say this, but it is like it really is borderline exploitative to ask an artist yeah. who's like, you know, depending on the artist who's put years and thousands of hours into into developing their skills uh-huh. and maybe even possibly paid their way through art school uh-huh. to use those skills that they developed and paid for for a project where they have to work hard and quote unquote put time in for months and get almost nothing Uh you might think this is okay but it's not companies Uh have been destroyed by using these kinds of tactics on their employees or freelancers which is true Uh george had just finished telling me about i think it was like a company in i don't even know like halifax or something that Uh have been you know really pounding on their employees and then someone finally got fed up and just i think they, uh, they went to some sort of Canadian agency and reported, uh-huh. you know, like this company was doing shady shit and they had like illegal programs yeah. and they, they, they like, like the ship not only sank, it exploded <laughs> and then like, you know, showered debris everywhere and uh, then it was gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, it doesn't matter where an artist is from or if they're willing to live on five to ten an hour. Uh-huh. That amount of pay is not equivalent to the average market value for professional level work. Again, yeah. with that average market value, uh-huh. if you're cool with getting subpar work for the amount of money that you have, uh-huh. then by all means, you know, like I wish you the best of luck. Go ahead with this. Uh-huh. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. And and uh and uh, <laughs> I was like, I agree, but unfortunately, we're not Blizzard and don't have deep, deep pockets to pay as much. Yeah. And then I was just like, well, don't ask for 350 assets then. I didn't say yeah. that because I was at this point, I was just like, well, then, all right, fuck it. Yeah. Like, like, you know, <laughs> one thing that I'm forcing myself to do, you know, a lot more even even today in this mm-hmm. day and age where people argue about fucking everything yeah. is just like, don't some things some battles are just worth fighting you, you know yeah, it's some things you can't win yeah you just got to walk away from yeah because yeah. I, I said my piece and you know what here's the thing though if i like one of the reasons i was doing this even as i was doing it i'm like okay mm-hmm. what is what is my goal in this interaction why am i doing this because if yeah. i'm not doing this for a reason i'm wasting my time mm-hmm. i could be working right now yeah um, and I, the, one of the reasons that I justified doing this was mm-hmm. if I ever get another email like this, I can literally copy paste things and be able to, you know, basically shut people down really quick because I've already said more or less everything I have to say at this point. Yeah. I might have things to add later on if I'm a little more experienced and blah, blah, blah. But if someone comes to me with a job for like, you know, a really low amount of pain is a real douche about it. I'll just be like, copy, yeah. paste, send, <laughs> forget about it. Yeah. And I mean, like it, it, our game will bookend this because we're having to finish up here, but, um, it seems to be a thing that people would only apply to artists. Like no one would look at a software engineer and ask a guy to code, like for nothing. I mean, like yeah, it'd be, people would be like, well, that's, that's stupid. Why would you do that? But then when you talk about artists, people are like, oh, of course they would work for free. They're fucking. That's artists. because no one thinks of like a software engineer who does software engineering for the sake of software engineering. Like yeah. it's it's always been a commercial thing. Yeah, he's doing it for a job. Yeah. Yeah, like art, you know, like has been commercial for a while, like the uh-huh. past, I don't know, 50, 60 years ish. People see it as a passion, yeah. Yeah, like, and for, for fucking sure, if you want to get good at art, it uh-huh. is a passion, but it hasn't been commercial for nearly as long as, you know, almost every other long lived trade, you know, out there. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and, uh, it's the same. I mean, that's the thing. It's another kind of ones we're getting, but even like Ash talked about the guys just now where he's talking about like, the whole revolution that's coming that is trying to unionize the entire industry and make it so that people are earning proper wages and not getting treated like shit um, because it's such a new industry. It's, the commercial side of it is, is so new. So yeah. yeah, and like like uh, who uh, who was it? Um, uh, how to render, how to draw. Come on, Scott Robertson. There we go. Ah. Scott Robertson. Um, I, in a in a in a video for Art Station, you've probably seen it. Um, mm-hmm. he was saying that you know even though the indus- like 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 the um, the whole moniker concept artist and or you know illustrator for games and sort of that kind of side of the industry. Yeah. You know, it's been around for a good 15, 20 years, but. You know, and that might seem like a long time until you realize that's not a long time. That's like yeah. it's in its it's in its infancy. So people getting into the industry right now uh-huh. are getting in at a very good time because yeah. they're it's like it's like getting into the animation is, industry a hundred years ago when it was non-existent. The it's like yeah, it doesn't end stuff. Yeah. It's like it's not non-existent now. It's a fairly large industry, but mm. so was Disney and Fleischer and uh, all of the large Warner studios. Brothers, Warner Brothers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. MGM and all them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like we're basically at that point in our history as like both, I mean, film kind of, but games mainly is sort of where we're, where we're looking at. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, like, like I think like, I don't even want to bring up the whole, like we're, we're getting an industry talk now. We got to end yeah, soon, but yeah. the whole 
you know, Gamergate thing and all that crazy industry yeah, drama yeah. and stuff. What I what I actually think that is isn't a whole bunch of people. Well, no, it, it is a whole bunch of people yelling and screaming about you know what is essentially bullshit. Yeah. But it, it it's it's kind of what I think of as growing pains. Yeah. And every industry has them. You look at yeah. you look at any commercial industry ever, like uh-huh. the auto industry, uh-huh. airlines, uh-huh. fucking agriculture. Yeah. Everything has those growing pains. Yeah. As it's sort of you know developing. Yeah. Same thing with, I mean, games is moving about a hundred times fast than anything else in, you know, any other quote unquote industry in history, Uh but we're going through our growing pains. I think as a society, we're doing that too. We're going through the usual cycle of, you know, conservatism and liberalism and all that. Uh But again, as an industry, I think we just have to kind of, you know, ride, (laughs) ride the crazy bus for a while, but eventually it'll sort of level out. We'll become like the film industry and then we'll start remaking everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Even on, though we were kind of doing that already. Yeah, definitely. And on that, on that note, I have a really cool little story about Leonardo da Vinci that we'll end with. Um, <gasps> oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Uh, so someone told me ages ago that, um, and this was to be true, so I'm basing it off that it is true, but it could be totally wrong, but it's only um, a minute worth of storytelling, but it's really important to what we're just talking about where uh, Leonardo da Vinci at the time was pretty famous and he was sitting uh, in a cafe somewhere and someone came up to him and said, oh, you're Leonardo da Vinci, um, would you draw something for me on this, like, whatever you had at the time, like a piece of paper or a napkin? Would you he... draw a picture on this leaf, please? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the paper back then. But, um, papyrus. But, yeah, papyrus. <laughs> yeah, um, but he was like, yeah, sure, uh, anything. He was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, you know, because you're Leonardo da Vinci, so whatever. And he was like, okay, yeah. So so he draws something in like 30 seconds um, and says to the guy, okay, that'll be, now, like, in real money back then, I couldn't work it out. But say he asked for, like, I don't know, Three gold coins. Yeah. <laughs> like like three hundred dollars or something like that. And, yeah, the, and the guy reasonable. Yeah, and the guy was like, Why the fuck would you charge me that? Like it took you thirty seconds to draw that that piece of, of art on my sketchbook, right? And then after eventually said it took me thirty years to learn to draw that in thirty seconds. Yeah. Which yeah. just encompasses the whole thing we've been talking about. But paying for people's time <laughs> and experience, so yeah. Um, yeah. And if Da Vinci at that time was trying to justify it, to think that we're still having to justify it in 2016 makes my head crumble. <laughs> Four hundred years, and I mean, at that point, there was no commercial art industry; it was yeah. all patronage. Yeah. I mean, we have Patreon now, but it's a little different. Yeah. So you get paid by a rich king to like exactly a rich art. king or the pope. You know, yeah, they were yeah, basically yeah. the same thing back then. I mean, yeah. no church and state. Yeah. still they, they they have a similar amount of power. But yeah, yeah. So so like I said, that's a, a whole that one. You know, it took me thirty years to let me draw that in thirty seconds is is a totally over encompassing thing to to fathom. But it, it makes so much sense when you talk to it about artists and they're like, yeah, that 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 is exactly what we're struggling with. You people yeah. don't realize that you're paying for you're not paying for you to doodle. You're paying for your 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Of Especially space. when you're only like, you know, four or five years into learning this stuff and yeah. you're like, dude, yeah. what am I going to, how how powerful <laughs> will I become in the next 25 years? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, so... Um, but that's so- Actually, um, there's there's something else that we should probably link in the show notes. Uh, there's... um. It was sort of like a, a really short, you know, like seven minute times three video documentary series about people like Leonardo da Vinci and people like sort of other artists or creators throughout history yeah. who were kind of deadbeats until, you know, way later than you would normally assume. Oh, yeah. Like in da Vinci's case, he was like 30 or 40 before he even, you know, like like finished his apprenticeship with whoever the hell he was apprenticing with. Yeah, that, yeah. And started to get, you know, like proper commissions. And, and back then that was, uh, that was like half of your lifespan. So, exactly. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna die at 63 and you haven't gotten like an actual job, and like when you're 30, yeah, how how much do you feel about yourself? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was like uh, like Jack Kirby as well, who was a famous Marvel artist. He didn't enjoy his first issue of Spider-Man until he was 46. So, fuck, fuck, fuck. yeah. Crazy. So yeah, all of you, all of you people who are getting into it late, or even getting into it, you know, what you might think is late, but really still is early, you know, yeah. Yeah. like you got time, no matter how yeah. fucking old you are. <sighs> yeah. Don't sweat it, bruh. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> um, what we'll do as well is um, just to end off, as, as I kind of like, I'll, I'll cut out for the audio version, but for the guys who are watching the video version, we will uh, link Colin's film um, onto the end of this as well, and you can watch it play out. 
Um, and yeah, that will probably the fuck out of it. Yeah. Oh my god, look at that character's nose! It's like on the <laughs> side of her fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's us for this week, guys. Um, we will hopefully. I'm working very hard to try and get people to come on and speak for interviews. Um, there is people like we do have like several people who want to come and speak, but. It's like Colin, it's trying to nail them down when they're not busy. Um, I know John Polidori will be coming on at one point to speak to us. He does want to come and talk. Um, I might have to literally nail me down. Like, yeah. Well, John's just back. He, he, this week he will have just been finishing CTN, which is the the convention for animation um, they do in California. Um, hmm. So he was just at that. Um, also, like, my other animation friends, including Matt Gazer, so they were all there. Um, and yeah, so he'll be coming on soonish. Um, a couple of other guys from Europe. Um, I know Borker is what's coming as well, the guy who worked previously at Even Line, so he's coming on soon as well, but I can try and nail him down. Um, nice. And yeah, that's again, that's just us. Um, thank you to the 121 people who are now subscribed to us. Um, <gasps> it is awesome. We are very you pleased. are our favorite people. <laughs> yeah. Um, keep subscribing, guys. We've got lots more to come. Um, we will try and get an interview up, if not this week, the next week, and then we will call you back to talk about something else. Um, and yeah, um, any cliff notes before the guys start watching your animation, Colin, or anything to say about it? Or please don't judge me too hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Like I'm, I'm in in the time that I had, I'm proud of what I was able to do, and mm-hmm. we 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 sort of managed to. Uh, we we actually got through quite a bit in this episode. Like yeah. <laughs> it was really off the cuff, but yeah. you know, There's that sometimes about, generates yeah. the best shit. So yeah. hooray! Yeah, and I mean, like if any guys are struggling with time management, if you've got any questions, again comments below and myself and Colin will try our best to answer it. Um, I don't know if Colin could make the stuff available for like you guys to download or view, but if I guess not, we could try. Like I can send you the shit. Yeah, and... I, I mean in the end of it though if you guys are super keen, you can always just enlarge your screen and take a screenshot because Colin's at the stuff up on the screen you can get an idea. Or just pause yeah. it. Pause it, look through his stuff. It's all been up on the screen for ages to look through. Um, it still is. You're yes. still staring at that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're um, gonna have to like change the end of this to some sort of cool painting or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably I'll probably just put some paintings up at the end of it. Um, but yeah. So anyway, so I can guys. You that's... know what would be cool actually if you like if you like like fade out to like a film scene and then fade back into like the the thing and then you know like do that. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what would be cool if you do like like this and like that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> as we say before we've ended the podcast yeah. so anyway anyway okay guys thank you very much for listening to us uh, check out Colin's film and uh, we will speak to you next time bye bye guys bye Oh, <laughs>